Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the ISM Session 1 of Year-End Webinar. Today we'll be looking at year-end processing and review, and our presenter is going to be Ms. Ty Duncan Whitcomb. Along with her, we have our support staff, Michael Jacobson, and one of our Portland consultants, Bruce Kern, who are here to answer any of your questions. With all of that, I'm going to turn everything over to Ty. Ty, thank you, and welcome. All right, welcome to our year-end processing and review for 2016. Um, if you've attended one in the past, there'll be some slight different information that we're just updating just to make you aware of the product as a whole, but um, it will go through and just take you through what your year-end process is going to be for W-2s, for 1099s, and for all the modules in essence period um, that you need to process for SAGE. So first things first, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, Library Master, let's start with the first thing, create a backup. You're going to be going into your Library Master module, you're going to be creating a backup of however many company codes that you need to do. If you're only creating one company code backup, if you're only running one company code, you can stick a B in the front and call it 16, 17 as you go for each year and create a backup of your system. Um, that way you always have a snapshot of your system before you start purging data and so on and so forth in the system. Keep in mind that if for some reason, and we'll go over this a little bit more, but if for some reason in payroll, you have to go ahead and start processing your payroll the first of the year, and you have not ran your W-2s yet, you will be running your copy of this off of your backup company. So when you go through and create your backup in the system, just make sure you're up you're backing up all modules that are going to be needed in the system if you're going to need to be able to produce W-2s um, after the first of the year if you've ran your first payroll. So pretty much in Library Master, it's just going into your company maintenance module, creating a brand new company code, um, saying copy, selecting your existing company, you're making that backup. The best way to make up that backup is to make sure at that time, if you possibly can, have everything posted in the system. So you want to make sure that all your daily transaction registers are posted, preferably not have any data entry in progress. That way you truly have a clean backup of nothing outstanding or unposted that is in the system. And also if you can try and do it when nobody is also in the system. So if nobody's in the system, like at the end of the night, or if you dump everybody at lunchtime because you know everybody's going to clear their desk and leave anyway, make sure you try and do that backup when nobody's in the system. All right. Then, so once you have your backup done in the system, then it's just time for you to go through and do your year-end process to get ready for the new year. So you're going to just simply do what you do, kind of like on a monthly reconciliation. Right now for your sub-ledgers, make sure your trial balances matches your AR. In the general ledger, same thing for a a AR, AP, inventory, and make sure your purchases clearing also ties out. So that's the first thing to do in your system is go ahead and get yourself reconciled and ready for the year. Then after that, it's time for you to finish cleaning up the books if you can. Go through in the system and purge all obsolete purchase orders. So you want to go through and start writing some of the utilities in purchase order. Do the same thing for sales orders. Get rid of all those open quotes that are sitting out there in the system that are now expired in the system. Just go through and purge those out. And then review your setups. You don't know how many times we get calls for people who they bought Sage 10 years ago. For some reason, they had the bright idea to only hold their system for 10 years as opposed to just maxing out the system as long as you have the hardware space. And then they go close the year and then call us and say, oh my word, we're missing a year. And then we go look at your setup options and it's set up that you're only holding history and say, for instance, the general ledger for 10 years. So just make sure that before you start closing out your periods, even in the sub ledgers, so for GL, AP, AR, all your modules, before you do your year-end close and roll over for that, that final year into the new year, go and look at your setup options and look how many years that you're holding history for um, in the system just to make sure that when you roll over, you're not going to just drop off and lose that history. And what happens is you don't lose the numbers. The system creates a summary entry for it, but you will lose all the detail that goes along with that information. So everybody asks about the order of close. Here's the order of close. It is very 
um, critical that you follow this order of close because some of these modules link into other modules in the system and to make sure your system is clean and so on and so forth and if you close another module before you close another like for instance if you close your AR before say for instance you close your sales order and your inventory then you run the risk of when those modules go to close it can't post to a period because you already closed those periods because some modules are dependent on others but you just follow the order of close bill of materials then work order barcode purchase order sales order inventory MRP time card ER or electronic reporting in the electronic reporting meeting, go through the system and print out your W-2s and your 1099s, payroll, ARAP, job cost, and then last but not least, general ledger. People ask why do we do job costs? Simple reason is job cost is one of those modules that impact AP and general ledger, so you just want to make sure that you get that one in there. It's not one of the ones that you post earlier because there's information that when AP posts, it rolls and posts stuff into the job cost module to make sure that stuff is accurately working for some of your comparison reports and so on and so forth. So inventory is one of the big ones that a lot of people come at the end of the year and go into the next year and they, especially if you're FIFO or LIFO, um, cost in tiers in the system. You have all these tiers if you go in the system and look at, say for instance, a Loxero report in the system you're going to see that you have all these tiers with zeros and zeros and zeros in the system. Or you go in and you find out you have all these um, LIFO and FIFO tiers that have negative numbers. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you go in the system, run your negative tier adjustment report. It's going to go through the system and let you know which quantities or tiers that you have out there that are in the negative to give you a chance to fix those by either adjusting inventory in to cover the cost or applying other tiers that do have quantities against the negative tiers in the system. You also want to go through the system and run to clear out any zero quantity tiers in the system so that you truly have a clean system. Keep in mind for if you're also doing your physical count at the end of the year, it is very critical that you go ahead and get everything done in the system in a correct way. Um, you want to make sure all your return of goods are posted, all your sales order invoices are posted, all your receipt of invoices are posted. Um, all of those things impact your physical count adjustment. And so before you freeze your inventory, you want to make sure there's nothing outstanding that can any way impact any of your inventory counts. So make sure you post all of that, then freeze your inventory. You can go back to processing, doing sales orders and return of goods after you froze your inventory but before you freeze it please please make sure that you have posted anything that's open that will impact your inventory module on the general ledger side a lot of people feel like they have to close their general ledger i always tell people keep your general ledger open um, if you if you need to and a lot of reason why is sometimes your books go off to your accountant and it might be March or April before your accountant will get you what those adjusting entries are so go ahead and close all your modules up to the general ledger leave the general ledger open and then once you get that information from your accountant put that information in and then go ahead and close your general ledger the general ledger is the only module that will allow you to keep that open um, in the system indefinitely and it's not going to severely impact your system like some of the, the subsidiary modules will. If you are using non-financial accounts, that's a different story. Um, if you are, call, send an email to support at GoISM or give us a call and we can walk you through what those ramifications are. But if you're not using non-financial non -financial accounts, feel free to keep your general ledger open until you get those adjusting entries. Um, into the system so that you can get it done. Also get your budgets entered. So obviously when you do your financials, if you're trying to do comparisons of actual versus budget, you're going to need to get your budgets in. Um, Sage has two different ways of getting budgets into the system. If you want to do budgets within Sage, we have the capability. We either can bring them in through the VI, jo v VI job, if you own the visual integrator job, visual integrator module, sorry, or you can use the GL Exchange, which is a built-in feature within Sage, which will allow you to bring those budgets into the system as long as it's in a format that Sage um, defines, and we can get you that information again 
if that's what you want to do and you have not done it or you don't know about budgets within Sage 100 and don't know you have that capability, reach out to us again at support at GoISM and we'll help you get that set up. So AP, processing 1099s. You can process your 1099s within Sage 100. Um, getting ready for 1099s. Go through vendor maintenance in the system. Um, you have that capability. Make sure that all the vendor addresses are correct. If you're supposed to be producing um, 1099s, 1099s for a vendor, um, make sure the correct either social security number or tax ID information is entered correctly in the system. You are going to need an IRD download to process the 1099s in SAGE. Um, and we will talk about that a little bit more of what is needed for the IRD because you have to be at certain versions within SAGE to be able to apply that IRD. Um, so I will definitely go over that. But for 1099s that are in SAGE, let's go ahead and review that. In the accounts payable module within SAGE, and I'm running SAGE 100 2016, which is one of the supported versions in SAGE. Um, so if my screen looks a little bit different, that's the reason why it is, because I'm running a SAGE 100, actually I'm running SAGE 100C um, at version 2016. And if you want to know what SAGE 100 C, SAGE 100 C is, email AM at GoISM and Sherry and the account management team over there would definitely get you information about what the new SAGE 100 C version is. So in SAGE, um, you will go into the period end module, and actually, I'm wrong, go into the reports module, sorry. And right here, underneath it, you'll have Form 1099 e-filing and reporting. And the Form 1099 e-filing reporting will bring up here in the system um, the 1099 screen. In SAGE, you have the ability to do dividend, interest, and miscellaneous. So make sure you pick the one that applies to you. We can run all three out of the system. The system will give you that capability. You can define a mi minimum year-to-date payment. So if 600 is your cutoff, you can put in what that number is, or you can leave it zero, and it will produce a 1099 for any amount that is currently in the system. You would tell the system what the 1099 year that you're producing. In Sage now, we have the ability to produce 1099s for whatever years that are possible. Um, the only catch-22 about that is with AATRIX, which is the engine that now drives um, our 1099 printing in the system, keep in mind that it only keeps forms for so long. What you're going to notice when the first time you go to run 1099s in the system, AATRIX is automatically going to give you a new update in the system for the new 1099s and the W-2s. So the, when you launch it to run W-2s and 1099s, this screen should pop up for you. If this screen does not pop up for you, um, please let us know because it could possibly could mean that you're not running the latest version of Aatrix and you're going to need to make sure that you run this update to make sure that you're running the latest forms for ACA, for W-2s, for 941s, so on and so forth in the system. All right. The system just going to go through and it's going to process the form. So right now it's going through my data in Sage 100 and finding for me which vendors for me I can produce a 1099 for. So it just goes through and processes and we're just going to simply wait while it goes through and processes for me. If you're missing your 1099 information, it will stop you and prompt you to enter that information. If not, it will just take you directly into the wizard. So this wizard is similar to the W2 wizard, but you follow the same thing. There's my 1099. It's asking me for that information. I will simply populate in here my company information. If you've done this in prior years, it will retain that information for you. So you do not have to re-enter that. The system will keep that information. But if this is the first time that you are running this in the system for this year, or first time you've ran it ever for Sage 100 because you're old school 1089 and you've recently upgraded, keep in mind that you will enter this information for the first time. It's going to ask you how you're doing. Are you filing for yourself? Are you a third party? We have some companies that are using Sage that... Um, are producers for other people. So we have a lot of accounting firms that are producing for other people on their behalf. 
Then we have a thing in here, if you have people who want to get their 1099s electronically, we have that capability, and is this your final return, so on and so forth, the different questions. You're going to just simply go through and answer these questions that are according to how you need to process it for your company. The system is then going to go through and then produce and find for me who do I need 1099s for. In my case, obviously, I have nobody in here that I'm producing 1099s for. It found somebody in here. I can go back then and correct the information if I need to correct the information. So for yucks, see if it will let me go through. Um, my error checked. Let's see how far it will let me go. And it won't let me go. I forgot to put an employee in here. I forgot to change companies. But the wizard would take me all the way through to my 1099s and go through and print it for me. And I will show you kind of what that looks like when we get down to the W-2 form. Because the W-2 form, I want to actually go into that more in depth. But you're going to follow this wizard to the, from the beginning to the end. And we will be sending you a um, document at the end of the call. Also showing you how the new Aatrix system works. So in case you have never used it. Um, you will be able to utilize that system going forward. So payroll, same thing. Make sure you do your backup. If for some reason, like I was stating before for the backup, if you have to produce your payroll for January 1st and you have not run your W-2s, you will be running that on the backup company. This is the catch to me too. If you have applied to run your first payroll, if you have applied quarter one 2017 tax table update, keep in mind that it has now changed your social security limits potentially if social security limits are changing for year 2017. If that is the case, keep that in mind that it could impact your W-2s and your 941s and so on and so forth. So we might have to change those limits back manually in SAGE. Um, rule of thumb, unless you have people that are very, 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 very high earners in your system, you can technically run one payroll in the system using the old tax tables. Just make sure you produce your W-2s before you run your second payroll, um, just so that it can catch up um, on limits. Um, and the reason why I say that is, is if for some reason you have somebody that, say, for instance, the first of the year, their first paycheck, hypothetically could be for $250,000. Um, obviously the limits are going to get a little skewed for them. So you just want to make sure you pay attention to what the limits are for Social Security. And if you know that you're going to have an employee that you're going to cut their first check that will be going over the Social Security limit, then rule of thumb for you will you will need to apply the quarter one 2017 tax table update and then before you run your W-2s, roll back in the system. All right. But you'll be able to print out your 941, your 940, your W-2s, any state required forms you will also print out. And then obviously in Sage 100, you know that we're able to do ACA reporting. So you will be able to get your ACA reporting reports produced in the system. So same thing again applies. You're just going to go into the federal e-filing and reporting. And when you go into the federal e-filing and reporting, it's going to show you all your different forms. The reason why I didn't want to update my um, I my Aatrix for you because I wanted you to just show you what happens. If you do not update your Aatrix, you're going to notice in here that it's still referencing in the system old forms. You're going to see that it's still referencing my, w, my 2015 year for W-2s and so on and so forth. If it says 2016, then you have the new update. So please make sure before you run your W-2s in the system that you run the update so it goes through and gives you that new information. But here are all your different forms. Here's your ACA forms at the very beginning of the system. Here's your 940, your 941s that are in the system. And then down here, obviously, you can see my W-2s and my 1099s. So you're going to simply run it like you will. Again, you would do your automatic update in the system. And the automatic update will just simply go through and it will just go through update sage and go and grab that update for you in the system. It's going to show you these are the ones that it's going to be updating and fixing for me. 
and then you just simply let the system go through and update your system. If there are state updates, it will go ahead and update the states as needed. It just simply goes through the form and updates everything that needs to be updated. And then comes back and allows me to continue going through and processing my forms. Second, it's processing. So when I come back into the system again and I go look at my federal e-file and reporting, if it is updated correctly, and obviously I'll go a little through a little bit more, 2016 has not been released yet. It is scheduled to be released, and I'll go through it again and reiterate again. On September 12th, AATRIX will update their update. They have not released their update yet, hence the reason why in my case my forms are still say in 2015, but in your case, um, in the system, once you do that first update, it will go ahead and roll that period forward. And you will see 2016. So here's my W2 wizard. Again, it takes me through everything that I need in the system to process. It's going to show me if I have all my state information. It shows me my state information. If I have any employees that are exempt or if I want to use control numbers, I just need to go through in the system and just select these yes or no in the system as needed. Whether what kind of a payer I am, if I have third party sick, just go through and answer the questions as needed in the system. And then have the system, it will go through and then start processing then for the system for your W-2s. So here's my W-2s in the system. It's gone through and it's pulled all my different employees in the system along with their corresponding information. I have some employees here that have a slight issue. So if you have employees that have issues, you can see you're supposed to go through and edit those. So you can kind of see it will go through and highlight and tell you which ones are incorrect, which ones are bad. Make sure you go through and fix all of those accordingly in the system so that you can continue processing. So I'm just going to quickly go through mines and edit mines and fix those. And let's see if it allows me to continue. Go through. Obviously, you won't do this, but for testing purposes, I'm going to go through and do this. Everybody's going to kind of get the same address here. And then it's going to go through and continue. You can see everybody sees my different box 12, 16s. If I have different boxes, the system will automatically go forward and get that done. I verify my social security tips. If I need to edit at this time, I do have the capability to edit information if I know I need to make some last minute edits in the system. I verify my state wages in the system. Here it is, it's telling, giving me a warning. It's telling me if I look at for one of these employees, my box three plus my box seven needs to be calculated. And for some reason, it's telling me that for some reason, one of my employees has incorrect information. I can go back and correct it for those employees that are incorrect. Otherwise, I can simply just go through and continue without correcting. While you go through this, you're going to see that there's going to be a lot of pop-ups asking. Aatrix is going to ask you, hey, do you want us to do it for your behalf? Aatrix for a fee will offer to print, seal, mail everything for you on your behalf. It will do your W-2s for you, and it will go through and mail them all for you, and you have that capability to do it. It can also do your ACAs. If you want to do that, you'll see, and I'll go through, you can enroll. If you don't want to, just hit next, and it blows through it. When this comes up again, it's going to ask you, hey, do you want to pay to do it? If you want to do them yourself, just switch to other options. And then down here, you can see where you can go through and just print your employee W-2s yourself, your federal, and your states yourself. They can e-file these for you for a fee. 
But if you don't want to do it because you know you're going to send it in yourself, just simply, again, uncheck those in the system, and you're going to notice down here that your total cost is zero. Just switch to the other options in the system. Again, it's going to ask you, hey, do you want them to do it? Just leave the box unchecked and just ignore that information in the system. And then it simply goes through. It's going to say this is what it's going to do. Print your, all your different forms. And then you just simply begin the process. So here is mine in the system. It's going to go through. It looks like I have some Wisconsin W-2s that I have for some of my employees. You're going to go through and fill your paper at this point with your blank four up paper and it will just go through and print different employees. As you go through each step, just go ahead and just fill in your paper as you need it. Here's my employee W-2, same thing again. I'm just going to simply fill my paper in with whatever paper that needs to go in. If you are looking to purchase paper um, for it, um, I will show you whom you can purchase paper from um, in one of my slides that are coming up here shortly. So here's all my employee W-2s. Again, same thing, populate my paper as I need it. All W-2s for us in the system are four up W-2s. They are not two page W-2s, they are four up W-2s. So when you do it, you're gonna be purchasing blank four up paper, or you're gonna be simply just putting in blank, just paper for your copy. You don't necessarily have to put the perforated paper up. The only ones that will be two up paper will be this federal W-2. Again, for this, you're just putting plain white paper in the printer and printing these out in the system. But for the employee copy, it will be a two-up copy W-2. And then here's my federal W-3. Again, same thing. I'm putting plain white paper in the system and producing those in the system. Then my W-2 notice. What this W-2 notice is, if you do not purchase the four up perforated paper for your employee with the notice pre-printed on the back, Sage will print off the notice for you that you can include in the envelope with their four up W-2. That way you're meeting all the requirements of what the IRS requires for you to give your employee when you hand them their W-2s. Alright? And then that's it. What's going to end up popping up at the end of the system is it's going to go through and say this is everything that's printed in the system. You can go through and reprint again. You can start all over if you want to. If you want to now, for some reason you didn't e-file, but now you want to e-file, you can go back and e-file it at this time. Or if you need to go ahead and do corrections to do corrected W-2s, you would select that in the system. Otherwise, all you're going to simply do is close, and you're at that point, you are done with producing your W-2s at this time. So forms. You can order forms from SAGE. SAGE forms that if you purchase from the SAGE Checks and Forms Department are guaranteed to work with AATRIX. You either can go to the SAGE website, which is sagechecks and forms, that link there, or you can call SAGE and order your forms. SAGE will know exactly which forms that you need to purchase to produce. Just simply make sure you tell them that you have SAGE 100 um, and they will make sure that you get the correct form so that you can produce your forms at the end of the year. So, when will the IRD be available? The IRD is going to be available for download and installation the week of December 14th. That will be to be put on your Sage 100 system. AATRIX after 2 p.m. on December 12th approximately is what they're shooting for. You will then have the update to make sure that you have the 2016 forms that are needed on the AATRIX side, which is the wizard that we just went through, to make sure that you have your 2016 forms. Finally, to be able to produce 1099s and W-2s, you have to be on one of the following four versions. 2014 product update 7, 2015 product update 3, 2016 product update 1, or you have to be running the latest version, which is the new Sage 100 version 2017. If you are not running one of those four versions, please reach out to us at am.goism.com, um, and the account management team will get you set up on the SMW so that we can get your system upgraded so that you can produce W-2s and 1099s for this year. Also, while we're at this, let's go ahead and talk about this. If for some reason you are running Sage 2014, keep in mind that this will be the last IRD that you receive. 
Um, Sage already has dis will be discontinuing support for that product um, as of 9 30 2017. The only update, you're not going to get any more product updates. Um, they are no longer updating the system anymore. Um, the last product update that they issued for that version was in 2015 in November. There will be no more hot fixes after the end of this year. And the last tax table update you will get will be the 2017 quarter one tax table update. You will not be getting any more tax table updates for version 2014. So to be after this last IRD and update, 2014 will be falling off the map. So 2014 next year will not be supported. It would only be version 2015 and higher. So keep in mind, as Sage releases new versions, the old versions are going to drop off year after year after year. Um, that 2014 version obviously was released in 2014. Um, so they're not going to do anything for that version after the end of this year. So just make sure you keep that in mind. If you're at least a version 2014 um, in the system, this will be the last year that you get IRDs and you will only get the quarter one 2017 tax table update. After that, you will not be getting anything, anything else for that 2014 version. And that is it. That is our year in um, procedures in the system. Um, I'll open up the floor back to Sherry to be able to take questions. Um, if for some reason, um, as we were going through the procedure, you have quite going through all of this, you have questions, you know you're not on a supported version, again, reach out to am at goism.com or support at goism.com um, and we will get you on the schedule. And then Sage City, I don't know if everybody's familiar with Sage City. Um, it is a community driven um, portal out there that Sage has on the web. Um, there is a year end section out there the link I know I have on the screen is kind of long, um, but um, we can we will make sure we get that link out to you at the end again with a lot of follow up information for year end. Um, but there it is in the system that's a link to get you to the year end articles, um, all the information, order of close, so on and so forth. Just anything about the year end will be held at that link and you'll be able to go to that link and see um, information that is out there. Um, that is it. And then I will turn this back over to Sharon. Thank you very much, Ty, for that informative presentation. Please note that you will be receiving a follow-up email tomorrow uh, regarding this webinar. In that email, it will include handouts with information from today's presentation. So Luke, I did see that you asked that question. So yes, you will be receiving a handout, as well as there will also be a survey. Please take a few moments to complete the survey. It's very quick um, regarding our presentation. We're always trying to approve and we appreciate your input. And with that, Liz, do you have any further questions for Ty? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Well, with that, we are ending session one of our ISM year-end webinars. We will also have the same session presented by Michael Jacob, our support uh, representative, on Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. If you'd like to join that, please go out and register. The events are on our website. And with that, I thank everyone. Have a great day and happy year-end closing. Thank you.